It's never been easier to get on the water with Academy Sports and Outdoors. Stop by your local Academy store or online at academy.com today and shop great gear from fishing's top brands like Luz, Zebco, Abu Garcia, Shimano, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to the Fisherman's Post Saltwater Podcast Series. This episode is titled Cast Farther Than You Thought Possible, and we're going to be talking to Tommy Farmer of Carolina Cast Pro LLC, and we're going to be covering such topics as the need for distance when casting, quote-unquote secrets to long-distance casting, and then we're going to finish up with the five fundamentals of power casting. You know, this is certainly Tommy's area. He's well-versed in this, and so I think we're going to get a wealth of information on long-distance surf casting. My name is Gary Hurley of Fisherman's Post. Fisherman's Post has been serving the saltwater fishing community of North Carolina since 2003. We've been bringing you fishing reports, fishing information, fishing tournaments, fishing schools, and now in this latest and greatest chapter, the Fisherman's Post Saltwater Podcast Series, and it is in this series where we reach out to our captain and guide friends from up and down the North Carolina coast and ask them to share with us their insights, their knowledge on how to catch more fish more often. And what we're really trying to do is give you confidence and empower you to get you and your family out on the water, spending more time together more often. And I am joined in this podcast endeavor, this episode, just as I am every episode with my partner, my podcast partner, Billy Thorpe of Copilot Studio, Copilot Studio, a podcast studio offering podcast services for hire. Hello, Billy. What's up, Gary? Good to see you again, man. It is good. It's good to be back in the seat. It's good to have the headphones yeah. on. This is now very, very comfortable, a place I, en I enjoy being. Yeah, man, it's fun. It's a good... Well, for me, it's like a hobby that I get <laughs> that I get to do. And so I'm like, oh, wait, do one hobby, talk about another hobby. Super, super amounts of fun, man. So, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, man, we got a good show tonight. We got a good show. Um, before we get to our Tommy Farmer, though, what do we got to do? Well, let's talk about... We going to talk about sponsors first? Yeah, let's well, talk about I love sponsors. sponsors. <laughs> I'm excited about this. We have, an, we have actually a new sponsor we want to introduce to you guys. Uh, this is R.A. Hitch, uh, Raleigh Apex Hitch. And, and these guys specialize, Chris and his team, in hitches, trailers, bike racks. Uh, man, just all kinds of uh, accessories for fishing and the outdoorsmen. Uh, so be sure to go check those guys out. And, they, man, they've been pretty generous. They're going to give away like 20 bucks discount for anybody that comes in and says, hey, we heard you on the Fisherman's Post podcast. And they're going to give them 20 bucks for doing this. So, so that's a real thing. Let's say that again. 20 bucks 20 by the bucks. end of June. You just mentioned Fish Post Podcast, yep. 20 bucks off. Until June 30th. That's hey. right, man. So that's a pretty good deal. Man, you know what? Here's what I'm thinking. And I apologize because I'm an advantageous guy. But you know that. You've known <laughs> that about me for a long time. You know how you get on the show and say, man, I wish someone would give me a boat? Yeah. I, you got something to ask? You got to ask? You know what I'm thinking? Man, <laughs> I wish someone would give me a new trailer. All right. Because my trailer got smashed in the hurricane. <laughs> well, the R.A. Hitch may do that, but it might have to be the R.A. Hitch podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. I'll call Chris. I'll see what he says. <laughs> you never, hey, the answer is always known unless you ask, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> with a with a coy smile. Hey, I'm Gary. Hey, I, I know. <laughs> Thanks for being a sponsor. How about that free trailer? <laughs> <laughs> I know we're only a couple episodes in, but I'm feeling good. This is episode one that you sponsored. Can you just hook me up with a trailer? <laughs> So if that's the case, the Marine Warehouse is definitely giving me a boat. A big one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's plug Marine Warehouse. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta turn. This hey, off. it's Robbie with Marine Warehouse Center in Wilmington and Charleston. We are headquarters to prepare custom boats. These center consoles are handmade in Washington, North Carolina, and are custom designed for fishing and family fun on the water. Right now, we have several models in stock. The deal times on the custom orders are around five months. These boats are custom built to fit your needs, from the seating, the tops, the leaning posts, and the live wheels. You design the entire layout of your boat. Come by and see for yourself why they're one of the fastest growing boat builders in the country. That's an exciting uh, new line they're offering, man. I like what they got going on there. Yeah, man. It's nice. I wonder if I can get one of those. <laughs> How about one of those boats, <laughs> right? Sponsor. 
<laughs> you know, we just have one lying around that you can't sell in this crazy market. Maybe we just use it for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I know there's, what, th 300 million boats sold in 2020. Surely you can give one away. <laughs> well, I tell you, man, Terrell has not let up. He's still on it. He's on it. Hey, and Yeah, it's good. This time he called me on his flip phone and, you know, wanted to give me a, wanted to tell me the latest joke. He said, you know. <laughs> he called me on his flip phone. <laughs> I think he was power walking around Mayfair. He's <laughs> got the jeez. All right, I'm going to let you continue. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make it to the joke. What does a fish wear to keep warm in the winter? I don't know. And this is Terrell's joke, not my joke. A right. fish wear in the winter to keep warm. A shoal. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's the shoal where they reside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god! It's a play on word. I, All right, but here I am explaining a joke, which is yeah. a bad sign. So let's go to a fish photo, Terrible. please, please, Bill. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here's a fish photo. Uh, this is uh, Finn, Kurt, and Miles Layton with some red drum they caught using frozen cut mullet on bottom rigs while fishing the surf in Rodanthe. Good looking family. Good looking fish right there. Right on, man. Uh, you know, they're stacking up red drums, surf fishing photo. We got Tommy Farmer talking about long distance surf casting. Yeah. I, I like how this thing is coming together. Yeah, that's a it seems like someone orchestrated that. Pretty good. I don't know who, but And in the in the spirit of moving into the main seminar but wanting to hit everything, give our listeners, our watchers the quick on the buy me a coffee. We I like I really like that feature. Yeah, I love Buy Me a Coffee. It's awesome. Uh, so once again, if you are not familiar with Buy Me a Coffee, it's buymeacoffee.com slash Fisherman's Post. And as a listener, viewer, if you want to support the podcast, really if you just want to support our caffeine addiction, <laughs> then you can buy us a coffee, like five bucks or whatever buys a coffee. And, uh, man, we've had people support it. So we really, really enjoy those yeah, guys man. who've you know been a contributor to us personally to take, <laughs> take care of our coffee habits. It's just another affirmation, man. We love comments, we love yeah. subscribers, and we love the buy me a coffee. And as a millennial, five bucks is a deal because my coffee's eight bucks. So I'm still oh my god, I'm just kidding. That would hurt. I would. <laughs> I would say, excuse me, how much? Uh, how uh, eight bucks? What are you talking about? Well, Billy, drink your coffee to pay attention because when I'm done talking with Tommy Farmer, we are coming back to you for Billy's best takeaway. I'm excited, man. I'm All right, learn a lot. So our guest tonight. I'd like to say hello to Tommy Farmer of Carolina Cast Pro LLC. Cast farther than you thought possible is the title of this episode. Need for distance, secrets to long distance casting, and five fundamentals of power casting. Welcome to the podcast, Tommy Farmer. Pleasure to have you on. Hello. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, man. I've known you. I mean, haven't known each other well, but you've been on my radar for a long time. And it was actually, I'm going to, here's me doing another plug. It was actually one of our subscribers that, texted in and said, you know who would be a good guest is Tommy Farmer. And I immediately agreed with him. So we do love when people are paying attention. We love when they make those requests, especially when there's such a good one, like inviting you on the show. Welcome to the show again. But Tommy Farmer, before we get to talking about long distance casting, as is tradition on the Fisherman's Post podcast, we've got two questions that you have to negotiate through first. Are you ready, Tommy? I am ready. So the first question is, why should we listen to anything you have to say about long distance surf casting? Why listen to you? Okay. Uh, my background, uh, I was born and raised in Southeast North Carolina, started surf fishing when I was in my early twenties, got serious about distance when I was in my late thirties, I uh, started competing. My first competition, I was kind of a late bloomer. I started at 38 years old. Um, the a good friend of mine and I were on the beach. This guy is a lifelong buddy. He, he's uh, from, from Wilmington. We were on the beach one night surf fishing, and we were doing what lifelong buddies do. We competed in everything from uh, Little League Baseball, chasing girls in high school, racing our muscle cars, arm wrestling, everything. So I threw a cast. He threw a cast. We both claimed victory. Um, we ended up out in the field about a week later, uh, for real. And, and, and he took my $20. He actually outcast me and took my money. So that kind of lit a spark. It, 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 uh, it ignited something inside of me and inside of Tony. And we started going, uh, to tournaments and started, and, and I was not good. I was not a natural talent. It took a lot of work 
for me. And, and I learned early on um, my first tournament, I was like 300 feet behind the guys that were out front. And I knew I either need to, needed to a get another hobby or B get serious about it and learn how to do it. So that's what I did. Um, I went, I went on, I won my first United States national championship in 2004. I think it was, uh, I, I broke the United States record for distance for the first time. Um, 2005, I went on to reset that record about a half a dozen times after that. Uh, I've won, um, 49 casting tournaments in the United States. 15 of those 49s were, uh, of those 49 were championship level events. In other words, they were um, uh, club champions or championships or whatever. They were championship level uh, events. Uh, I've also traveled internationally. This sport is much bigger in Europe than it is in the United States. Uh, I wanted to prove myself. I wanted to see how where I really fit in the, the global scheme of casting. So, 2006, I went for the first time and participated in what was the largest casting tournament ever held. Uh, it was called the Primo Invitational. Uh, at the end of the day on Sunday, I, I finished second in the world uh, in the largest competition that had ever been held, the main event. Um, I ended up competing in five international competitions, uh, went over the three times, England, uh, Wales, uh, Belgium, uh, and in those five, I took four top five finishes. Um, so I was pretty proud of that. I was able to compete with and beat most of the very best casters in the world. Um, I've been blessed to, uh, to learn from some of the very best casters in the United States and internationally in the world. So, uh, that's kind of my, I, I guess my, my, my resume as a subject matter expert in this field. All right, I'm going, Billy. I'm going to let that go through. <laughs> that was a good answer, man. I mean, I usually like a was little it, bit more. Was it but too I'm much? Gonna, no, no, <laughs> man. It was impressive. I mean, I was just thinking, how am I going to joke this? I thought about, oh, uh, what was the, if you took second in worlds, can we get the first place guy on? Um, who, Absolutely. Who arranged this podcast? I was thinking of the different ways I could go, but no, Tommy. That's I knew you were impressive. I hadn't heard it, so I enjoyed. I enjoyed that resume. Absolutely. So the second question, which is traditionally a non-fishing related question, um, I did not know your resume. I knew you had some records, some long distance records. And so I Googled, you know, long distance records and I came up with a couple. And here I'm going to ask you to take your best stab at answering this and take okay. a guess. What do you think is the world record for longest time spent not sleeping? Oh, my God. Three days. 10 days, 11 days, 11 days and 25 minutes. Mm. Now the second one, and this is the last one. World record for the longest poop. <laughs> Are you talking volume or length? I'm talking length. <laughs> and this was, as it was noted, it was, it was helped along the way with some fiber and other products that help you vacate. Your guess, Two you're not going to get it right. Two meters. Um, thank you for using European measurement on here. Um, <laughs> I do know what that means, but I'm going to go back to feet. 26 feet long. Good oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> All righty then. 26 so feet. So as impressive as your long distance oh. casting resume is, next I've week we're going to have the guy with the poop on here. <laughs> Get, get him on. That dude's got a tutorial how to empty out both your intestines at the same time. Mm. That's insane. It's mm. insane. But Tommy, how about it, man? The need for distance was in our pre program notes. Talk to me yes. about the need for distance. All right. Um, surf fishing is unique among the disciplines of, of, of fishing, of saltwater fishing. Uh, we're land-based, toes in the sand, so it's up to the individual to develop the skills and the tools to catch fish. Uh, rods, reels, lures, sharp hooks, fresh bait are all tools we use to increase our odds and our catch. The ability to cast a long range is just another tool in your tackle box. That's all it really is. Some people will tell you, you don't need to catch far to catch the, catch the fish. They're right at your feet. You're overcasting the fish. If the fish are at short range, anybody can catch them. If the fish are at long range, 
The shore casters will never even know the fish are there until a long caster shows up and bows up. Um, quick story. I was at Cape Point, North Carolina, I don't know, six, seven years ago. It might have been a decade now. I can't remember. Um, but I walked up to Cape Point. This is, for those who don't know Cape Point, uh, North Carolina is one of the most famous surf fishing locations in the world, really. Uh, I walked up one November afternoon and went to the right-hand side of the uh, conga line, as they call it. And there's 15, 20 guys out there doing what they do. Nobody was catching anything, mostly just talking. I stepped up there and just let one rip. I just bombed one out there. Um, I was probably 50, 70 feet past the rest of the guys. As I was walking back to the conga line, uh, an old timer was standing there and he was just belly laughing. He was chuckling. And, uh, I, and I said, how you doing? He said, you know, you just overcast the fish, don't you? He said, you flew right by him. And I smiled and said, maybe so. And, uh, and I had no longer got the words out of my mouth. Tap, tap, boom, red drum. Uh, I caught a nice puppy drum on the first cast. And like I said, nobody else was catching anything. Um, reeled it in, landed it, let it go. Uh, and, and this went on. I proceeded to catch drum on 13 out of the next 14 casts. Nobody else was hooking up. A good friend of mine, um, a fellow named Ryan, Ryan Young, steps up and, and, and asked me, how, how, how's it going? I told him, I said, the fish are at long range. He bombed out as soon as... He hit one out there, it was on for him. So the moral here is if, if you're uh, if you're a short caster, the fish can be there and you'll never even know it until somebody shows up. Before I was done that day, the guys that were laughing were asking me to, to, to cast for them before it was over. Um, so uh, that's pretty much the need. The need is, is to, it, it boils down to just being a tool in your tackle box that you pull out and you use when you need it. So other than, <clears throat> excuse me, other than Cape Point, any other locales come to mind where long distance casting is absolutely an advantage, you know, oh, on more days and then anything other than red drum that you found, it's an advantage to get out there further. Well, uh, red, red drum is my primary target when I, when I'm surf fishing. It's just what I love to catch, but pompano, sea mullet, they can all be on the back side of that first bar or even the second bar. You look, as, as, as most surf fishermen know, you look for breaks in the bar. You look for cuts in the bar, and that's where you want to focus. I always, if I'm hunting, if, I, if I'm trying to find where the fish are, I'll throw one short right in that first gun. I'll put one inside of the break, one side or the other, and then I'm going to bomb one on the back side of the bar, on the outside of the break in the bar, hunting for the bigger fish because a lot of times that's where they are. And that makes sense. I mean, I follow that logic. It gives you just more exploratory tools to check out where in the perpetual search for fish from the surf. Absolutely. Man, uh, so you, I like in the program notes that you put secrets, the word secrets in quotation marks when we reference yep. secrets to long distance casting. So yep. what do you got for me? I can break it. I can actually break it down to the secret to long distance casting. And people, as soon as I say this, people think, oh, yeah, he's getting ready to lay down a line here. But this is the honest to God truth. The secret to long distance casting is learning to put the rod and hence the sinker through the largest possible arc that you can generate, finishing with a burst of power and speed late. In other words, bigger arc, accelerate the rod and the sinker through that arc and burst of power and speed late. That's the secret. All right. I mean, well, I want to make sure I follow that. So how is it that I am accomplishing the biggest arc that I'm possible okay. of? Uh, well, that's where the five fundamentals of power casting come in. Okay. Uh, you, you, it is, it is a, it is a five step process. Really. Uh, and once you get that process down, it, it's going to happen. So is that where we should go? I don't, I don't know that I have any follow-ups. I mean, you were so succinct with the secrets to long distance casting. I mean, presented it <laughs> in an easy to digest fashion. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm, I have clarity there. So should we, okay. should we go to the five? Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's going to be the best way. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about each one. I'll talk about the uh, fundamental and then I'm going to stand up and I'm going to do my best to demonstrate it on, on camera here. Uh, it, it may be a little bit tough when I'm talking about footwork, 
uh, to be able to see uh, see my feet, but but I'll be able to get across to you what what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say. Okay, let's go, man. Walk me through one okay. number one. Right, we're we're going to start with uh, the fundamental, uh, the foundation for success is your footwork. You've got to have a solid base from which to cast. If you don't, if you're off balance, if you're falling forward, if you're falling backwards. You're, you're never going to be successful because these are all power leaks. So it starts with your footwork. I'm going to stand up. All right. See if I can keep myself on the camera here. This is this is the only prop that, that they'll let me have. It's just a stick. That's all. That's all they. That's all they let me have. Okay. <laughs> if you can imagine on the ground, I I, I, I visualize a big clock face on the ground. This is how I'm able to orient and teach others to orient their cast. If you just, you know, if you step up to the water and every time you cast, you're doing something different, that you're never going to have consistency. So what I do is you pick a target. You pick a target where you want the sinker um, or, or your payload, your bait, whatever, to land. You want to orient that target as 12 o'clock on the clock face that's on this that you've imagined. When I'm doing this on the beach and I'm teaching, I actually take my rod and I'll, I'll draw a giant clock face for 12 o'clock, 39, 6. Um, but you want to orient your right foot in the center of the clock face. In other words, where the hands come together, you want your right foot there. You want your left foot 12 o'clock. So now we're basically lined up on target okay this is not the most efficient platform or space to cast from so what i want to do is make it easier i want to open my stance up kind of like an open baseball stance so i'm going to take my left foot my right foot staying at, at clock face center right in the middle i'm going to take my left foot and move it over to between 10 and 11 about 10 30. this gives you a comfortable athletic position you're you're, you're in a position if if you think about a shortstop, uh, if you think about a basketball player playing defense, it, it, you've got to be comfortable. You've got to be in an athletic position. You need to be able to move. The movement that you're going to go through is going to be an uncoiling of the body. You want your chest to face the target when you finish. So you've got to be able to, to, to turn to get into that. That hence the open stance. So right foot at clock face center, left foot forward of and left of the target at about 10 30 10 between 10 and 11 depending on where you're coming that's going to give you that solid base when you come through the cast you're not going to fall forward you're not going to fall backwards because you got a nice solid base from which to cast the foundation of success is your footwork so what i'm going to do i'm going to incorporate a couple of other fundamentals in this before we get there but I'm going to I'm going to rotate back at my hips. I'm going to turn back at my hips. The rod's going to extend back behind me. I'm going to get my arms pushed out. I'm going to rotate with my lower body through first. Come through. Execute. Punch pull at the end. That's fundamental number one. Footwork. It is the foundation of success for long distance casting. I like this. I like that you have it dialed in so that it's very easy for us to follow the clock face analogy and, you know, yeah, that, open that, face that and everything. That That's great. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. feel like, all right, I'm on my way to a to casting further than I thought possible. You absolutely are. Yep. Yep. Um, and all of it, and, and I'm going to throw this shameless plug out. All of this information is available in my DVD. I've got a DVD. It's called the Comprehensive Guide to Power Casting. Everything I teach plus a whole lot more is available in that DVD. All right. No, that, that uh, shameless plug is absolutely allowed. Shameless You're giving plug. us our time and your knowledge <laughs> this evening. You, you go right ahead. Okay. All right. So, I mean, I guess we're just counting down. I mean, I'm not yeah, necessarily man, that's, in that's order. Fundamental, that's fundamental number one. That it, is, uh, it, it takes up a pretty good a bit of time in the DVD because it's so important. Once you've got your footwork down, Pat, once you got it established, Everything else just kind of flows. Um, so if you think about the footwork as the foundation of success, then you, fundamental number two is your body. Okay. Your body is the engine that powers the cats. Uh, if people think that all the power comes from your arms. It does not. The, the, the power comes from your body, kind of like a, a shot put 
guy or even a golf swing or a baseball swing. If you watch those guys, they're uncoiling as they swing. It's not just their arms, their entire body or a boxer throwing a punch. It's not that, that, you know, six inches that his fist travels. It's all the energy that flows through his body and out of his, uh, you know, through his arm. Uh, I actually had a lot of, I had a guy, a martial arts master, you know, when I was first coming up through this, to help me to understand how to transfer energy and how to make energy flow through your body. And it helped me tremendously. So fundamental number two is the body. It is the engine that powers the cast. You got to think of your body like a spring uncoiling from the ground up. Um, legs, hips, torso, chest, shoulders, and arms. Arms are the last thing, literally, the last thing that comes through on the cast. Um, so we'll back up again. Yes, please. So body, engine that powers the cast. We're gonna we're gonna get back into our footwork. Foundation of success position, my right foot's at clock face center, my left foot's over at about 10.30. All right, I'm going to wind up. I'm going to turn back at my hips. Wind up. Now, my body is now a coiled spring, if you want to think about it that way. It's coiled up, ready to go. When I begin to cast, my arms do not move first. Guys send me videos all the time of themselves casting and want me to critique or give them advice, which I freely do. Uh, and, the, and the biggest thing is that people struggle to grasp the uncoiling of the body, okay? They want to move everything either synchronized together or they want to move their arms first before anything else moves. So what we're going to do is coil back. We're going to get our arms extended, which is the next fundamental, but we're going to jump to it. We're going to get our arms extended. Now, we engage the lower body first. If you're, you're already in position with your feet, so you kind of start with your knees and your hips. So we're here. It's a bump, kind of like a golf swing, where you bump before you actually move any other, anything else with your body. So we're here. Hips are bumping. Torso's coming through. Chest comes through. The shoulders and arms are lagging behind. And the arms will be the last thing to come through. So we're here. We're going to bump the lower body. Uncoil and then execute, boom. So it is a from the ground up, uncooling explosion of power. So I am Bye. concentrating on my legs. I'm actually being aware of the energy in my legs. Is that how you yes. would coach it? Absolutely. Uh, it, you, you, your, the large muscles of your body, your, your legs, your torso, your core muscles are much, much stronger than your arms, much stronger than your arms. And uh, you're going to get your arms will will engage. They will become part of it. We're going to discuss that in the next fundamental. But the power flows through your body from the ground up. All right. I have a body question that's just going to we're going to go ahead and see how the rest of this podcast is going to go. If you find me any any kind of funny. Do no. most long distance surf casters look like they spend time in a gym or do most long distance surf casters look like they don't spend much time in a gym? Depends entirely on how serious they are. When I was uh, at my peak, when I, when I was, you know, I, I'm, I'm almost 60 now, but when I was, when I was peaking in this in my forties and fifties, I was a gym rat. I, I was, I was, I wanted to become as strong as I could be for the sport. In other words, I, I, I was competing against guys much, much younger than me, and I had to be strong in order to compete. And, and, and it takes more than strength. You've got to have the knowledge and the, uh, to, to, to uncoil your body, to use your arms properly, to have the footwork, have your feet in the right position. But I needed to be strong. So uh, hitting the gym, if you're serious about it and you really want, if you want to compete, then I'm not going to say it's it's necessary because there are some guys that are just naturally gifted and they don't have to do it. But for me, I had to hit the gym. I, I had to get strong to to compete with guys much younger than myself. And I'm guessing you're focused on legs, arms, and core. Like you have to hit everything oh, yeah. because yeah, everything's was, involved. For me, it, for me, it was basically a, pow a power lifting type regimen. It was uh, squats, uh, bench press, uh, a lot of rows for pulling for the pulling motion of the cast. Uh, and it was just basically an overall, not a bodybuilder type 
uh, type physique is not what I was going for. It's just strength. Okay. Um, those, that concludes my follow-up question on number two, the body. And then <laughs> I think we're ready for number, th- unless you have final thoughts on number two, I think we're ready to move to number three. No, just, just, just keep, um, in, in your mind that, that it needs to be sequential. In other words, from the ground up, legs, hips, torso, chest, shoulders, and the arms are going to lag behind and be the last thing that comes through. Okay. So your arms are actually very passive in the cast until the end where they become very active. Uh, that makes sense. I mean, I can, I can follow that. I can see where people make that mistake, but now that you're laying it out, I can, it, everything is logical. I think I'm following everything so far. Kitchen is, is the most fun part of this whole thing to me. I love it. Good. Okay. Arms. Um, the, Footwork is the foundation for success. We've established that. The body is the engine that powers the cast. It's the driving force behind the cast. Your arms are connection between the engine as your body and the rod, the stick. So you, your, your arms are basically a connection between the, uh, between the engine and the rod. Uh, your arms are extended. Now, one thing I'll say is that if – you don't remember anything else for, for the viewers out there. If you don't remember anything else out of this whole podcast for learning to cast far, and this goes right back to the initial uh, secret to distance, learn to get your arms extended out and away from your body. Remember we talked about the arc. The bigger the arc, the bigger the cast. The, the secret to distance is having a big arc. Now, if you are casting, and I see this a lot, if you're casting with your arms tucked in here and you're doing this, you don't have a big arm. You've got a small arm because your arms are tucked in. You want to get your arms extended out and away from your body and leave them there as you rotate your body through the cast. Your arms are going to stay in the extended position until the end when they become active. Um, I'll step back here again. So, backing up, footwork, foundation for success, body. Uncoiling is the engine that powers the cast. Your arms. Your arms are the connection between your engine and the fishing rod. So in order to get the big arc that we want for distance, we need to extend our arms out and away from our body. If I was teaching, I would have the students lay the sinker on the ground like behind me, get his arms extended, uncoil the body like we talked about, boom going to come through. The arms are going to stay extended out. We're going to flow through an arc. Now, this, this rod is going through the largest arc that I can generate. I got little short, scumpy arms. I can't, my, my arc is only going to be so big, so I got to do everything I can to keep it big. So I'm here. My arms are extended. I'm engaging my body. The arms are staying passive. Arms are here. Now, my arms are extended. My left hand has risen as I came through so that my my left hand is between my eyes and my target. My target is not a wave. My target is not a sandball. My target is gonna be a spot 45 degrees in the sky above the horizon. So we're here, and when when we get into this position where my left hand is between my eyes and my target in the sky, then the arms become active. They go from being passive to being very active as you engage the punch pull. So we're here. We get in this position, it becomes a very aggressive pull with the left and punch with the right. Boom. So we're here. Boom. Full speed. Boom. Uh, Arms. Very important. You've got to keep them extended. You've got to make the arc big. They're passive. They're just kind of along for the ride, lagging behind the body until very late where they become very active. And during the punch pool, safe. All right. So I'm going to go with some more follow-up questions. So it is absolutely more of a side cast than an overhead cast. And looking at your action, or is it like a hybrid? We are jumping ahead a couple of fundamentals. I do that every time, Billy. The ideal ideal, uh, arc is going to be 45 degrees. In other words, not straight overhead, which would basically be 90 degrees to the horizon, 
and not flat side on them. Halfway between at 45 degrees is where you want to execute. That gives you the biggest arc that you can have. And so I'm going to guess that my other questions might be jumping ahead too. So the sinker laying on the sand, I mean, how long of a leader is that sinker going to drag through? Is it going to like load up like a fly rod or am I going to be able to get that thing off the sand quick enough? It's called that the, the, the fundamental cast, the basic cast is called a ground cast. It really is the, uh, uh, it's the fundamental cast that I, I think everyone should learn first. They should they should focus on that before they start. You know, people people think of tournament casters and they automatic automatically start thinking of a whirly gig, high flying pendulum cast where the sinker's going all over the place before they hit. What I'm teaching here is how to execute the finish or the hit of a power cast. Once you understand that, and once you have it down pat, then you can apply that finish to any casting style. For learning purposes, I have them lay it on the ground behind them, take the swing and sinker out of out of the equation, and and just let them execute the finish. If you if the sinker is laying on the sand, even with a baited hook, if you're using a drum rig or something like that, it's not going to come off. It'll be fine, and you can execute a cast that way. It's actually a very effective and powerful beach cast. They call it ground cast. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I want. I mean, in my mind, more people are going to use this on the beach fishing than take up tournament fishing. I mean, tournament casting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I hope yep. I hope you're an ambassador and a couple of people go, you know what? I want to try. I'm competitive. I want to try this. But I'm yeah. imagining most people are going to apply this out on the beach with hook and bait and just yeah. see how far they can get out there or see if they can it's, improve. It's a funny thing. Tournament casting, it, it, it is a sport upon itself. It's directly tied to fishing. But it, it is a uh, it's one of those things you can get the bug. For me, it became very personal. It became something that I, I desired to become the best that I could possibly be. And for over for over a decade, I was hands down the best caster in the United States. There was I, I, any any cast tournament that I went to, I felt like I was going to win. And if I if I didn't feel that way, then something something was wrong. Uh, as the old saying goes, Father Time is undefeated. And eventually, I lost it. I lost the title, but hey, it was it was a good run of over ten years for me. And and, and in that in that period of time, I, I reset all the record books for the United States. Man, uh, before I move on and set, ask you about number four, though, I got one more follow up. You said okay. I'm picking a target in the sky. I'm not picking a target yep. on the water. And that's correct. Yep. Like I'm looking into the sky where I want to aim this thing out. Yep, that's uh, that's fundamental number five. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we can go there. I wish I, maybe I should have looked at the pre-show notes a little bit closer. <laughs> we can go there DVD. Um, yeah. All right, fundamental number four. Okay, <clears throat> we've talked about <laughs> we, we've talked about the footwork being the foundation to success. We've talked about the body, the engine, and powers of cast. The arms are the connecting rods. The connection between the uh, between the engine and the rod and the need to keep them extended and keep them out until they become active and you punch pull. Um, the fourth fundamental is acceleration, okay? You want to, to think of uh, the cast not as just a brute force power hit with everything you've got from the start. Uh, I don't know how much experience that you guys have throwing bait casting type reels, but that's the prevalent type of reel used in tournament casting and, and most guys that are fishing for drama use bait casting that's why they're doing that. If you try using the techniques that I've described today, if you try to hit it as hard as you can from the start, your thumb is going to suffer for it. You're going to, you, the, the spool is going to slip under your thumb. You're going to burn your thumb white. It's quite painful and make you squeal. Um, but the, the key to it is learning to accelerate. Once you get that payload, you know, you might have four, five, six, even eight ounces and a chunk of bait on there. You've got to get that payload in motion before you apply full power to it. So it's kind of like uh, start slow, finish fast. It's, it's kind of like driving. Uh, this is a story I like to tell. This is an analogy that, that really uh, seems to drive it home to a lot of guys, especially car guys. Um, imagine that you're sitting at a dead stop, you're sitting in a, a Porsche, a Corvette, an old GTO like I've got, uh, just whatever your favorite car is. 
you're sitting at dead stop at the start of a long sweeping left hand curve. Okay, it's just a long sweeping left hand, hundreds of feet long left hand curve. All right, your goal is twofold. You want to get from a dead stop where you are out the other end of this curve as quickly as possible. And you want to do it in one piece. You don't want to you don't want to wreck your Corvette or, or your Ferrari. All right. So my question to, to you and, and to people is, are you going to put your foot? You've got 600 horsepower under the hood. Are you going to put your foot on the floor to yes. start? Yes. Yes, you are. Yes. <laughs> you're going to go in the ditch. You're, you're going to crash. You're, you're going to be the guy in the ditch. Okay. The answer is no. The answer is you, you, you roll off. You start slow. You accelerate through, and then you apply full power once you're moving. Same thing. Uh, otherwise, you're going into this. The same thing with uh, with a cast. You start slow. You accelerate through this arc that we've been talking about, and then when you get into position that we talked about with the arms, with your left hand out in front of your of your forehead, and 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 ready, then you apply the power. You pull with the left. You punch with the right. It's actually the more that you can focus on the pull aspect versus the punch aspect, the better off you'll be. Uh, but, but, but yeah, you've got accelerating through this arc, finishing with a burst of power and speed late is, is crucial. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a lot of blisters. So. I've, I've heard that before about the pull more important than the punch or the push. And if you, I- if you, if you think about if you can, and it's difficult sometimes, but the right hand, the right arm is basically a fulcrum. If you can think about it this way, that the left pulls the rod around this fulcrum. In other words, from here, coming through, keeping the right as straight as you possibly can. When you get to this point and you start pulling, this right is actually acting like a post or a fulcrum point that the left pulls around. So you're here, and then it's Done. Execute. I like it. Hey, uh, I'm going to push you on to number five just to make sure we have time to cover everything you wanted to cover. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the we, We've gone through one, two, three, and four uh, footwork, body, arms, uh, acceleration. The fifth fundamental is basically a number, and that number is 45. 45 degrees comes up over and over in the fundamentals of power casting. First thing, 45 degrees is your target. Your target is a spot 45 degrees in the sky above the horizon. It is not, it's, it's not a wave. It's not a sandbar. It's 45 degrees above the horizon. You need to look. I, I, when I'm teaching people, when we're out in the field, we're on the beach, I tell them to pick a cloud. Pick a cloud. Find a spot in the sky. What you're your, your body will follow your eyes. So if you're focused on a target, proper target in the sky, your body is going to cast to that target. If you are, are looking at a target on the horizon, in other words, the sandbar, you're going to throw a low line drive cast because that's where your body is executing the power to. Uh, so you want to pick that spot in the sky. You want to turn. You want to look up at it and execute the cast um, to that spot in the sky. The second application of the number 45 is when you come through, you want to stick the rod at 45 degrees on the finish. In other words, when you come through, boom, you want your rod tip pointing at that target in the sky that you picked 45 degrees above the horizon. You don't want this. You don't want to be trying to cast so hard that you end up down here and then you jerk the rod back up, that is a almost 100% recipe for a bird nest if you're using a bait casting reel. It just, it just is. It puts a, that, that dip of the rod down and jerking it back up actually puts like a power wave in, in the line and it'll run back down to the spool and poof, give you uh, a world-class bird nest. So, in other words, Boom, you want to stick it at 45 degrees. You don't want this. That's a bad thing. Uh, so your target is 45 degrees. You want to stick it at 45 degrees. The third application of the number 45, we talked about this a little bit a few minutes ago. Your, your ideal is not 
an overhead cast. This is not going to give you the best part. Your idea is also not a sidearm cast. You see a lot of guys, a lot of guys go to a sidearm cast, and it's actually kind of dangerous when you get in a crowd, but I see a lot of people doing it. The most efficient and effective angle is 45 degrees. It's going to give you the biggest arc. So, in other words, not flat, not straight overhead, but halfway in between at 45 degrees. That's where you're going to get the biggest arc and the biggest cast is going to come from 45 degrees through the arc. Does that make sense? Yeah, man. I mean, everything <clears throat> you you are a, a good teacher. Everything you said has been easy to follow. Even though we're on screen, we're not in person, and you're stepping back from the camera. Everything has been solid. I mean, you're okay. lesson on 45 and everything else. And so I think okay. this is the point where I say two things. I say, okay. Tommy, any last thoughts? Any last thoughts for our viewers, our listeners on casting further? And then what I want to do is I want to set you up to give it, tell us a little bit more about how Carolina Cast Pro LLC might help someone that watches this podcast and wants more Tommy Farmer. Okay. Um, question one again. Repeat, please. Any final thoughts? We're wrapping up the main event, okay. the main seminar. Final thoughts. Okay. I, uh, I teach this quite a bit. I've actually got a lesson coming up Saturday. People have come from all over the country, and I've actually had a guy come from from Sweden over here actually to take a take a casting lesson from me once. Um, final thought would be the fundamentals are the most important thing. If you can follow those five, I promise you that you're going to throw farther. I, I've got a 100% success rate uh, with my students of making people better. Uh, so so I promise this is proven stuff. This is not just something that I put together and and kind of made up. I've got 15 years plus of my life uh, pushing, no, no, closer to 20 years of my life involved in this. And, uh, and it absolutely does work. So fundamentals. And, and, and another thing is not, not to get frustrated if you don't see huge and immediate gains in distance. Everybody runs into what I call walls. In other words, you get to a distance and you just can't break through it. And uh, that's when you just have to go back to the fundamentals, practice, and you will move on through it. Now, I, what I'll say is that everybody has got their maximum. Everybody has got their peak, you know, what they can do and what they can't do based on size, athleticism, strength. There's a lot of factors, but everybody can get better. And then Carolina Cast Pro, you already mentioned that there's a DVD available. You know, Yep, yep, the the uh, comprehensive guide to power casting is my DVD. I should have one right here in front of me, but it's in the other room. Uh, they, uh, it's the, it's probably the best forty dollars that you're going to spend if you seriously want to learn how to cast further. It's, it's everything that we've talked about in in, in this little podcast and more. Um, so it, it's 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 a huge help. Um, the next thing is, is my product line. Uh, I have got a line of of, of of name brand rods, the Carolina Cast Pro Series, Tommy Farmer Signature Series rods. They are surf fishing rods starting from an eight foot half to one and a half ounce trout rod, a high modulus carbon fiber, and they step up through multiple models with the biggest one being kind of a flagship. It's 13 foot rated eight to 12 ounces, high modulus carbon fiber designed to throw big weights and baits for red drum. Uh, so I pretty much have the whole gambit of, of surf uh, fishing rods. I've also, um, I've, I also sell Akios or Akios Reels, which is a, uh, which is an up and coming uh, company. I've been selling for about eight or nine years now. Outstanding Reels. If you like Abu Garcia Reels, you'll love these Reels. Um, over the waves, sand sticks. They're all aluminum sand sticks that sit sit high, and, and hence the name over the waves. I also sell uh, drum rigs, uh, all sorts of two drop bottom rigs, different different type of rigs off of my web store. Um, and I've got a complete web store, uh, CarolinaCastPro.com, uh, and I can pretty much hook you up with whatever you need for long range surf fishing. Tommy Farmer, it has been an absolute pleasure talking long-range surf casting with you. 
I mean, from beginning to end, a wealth of information. I mean, I don't know if we could have put more information into that session. <laughs> it was great. It was. I'm so glad that a reader, you know, reached out and suggested you. And I thought to myself, yeah, man, I've talked with Tommy way back when in the yeah. early days of Fisherman's yeah. Post, and I'm yeah. so happy this came together, man. I've thoroughly enjoyed Me it. Me too. Yes, sir. I'm. I'm glad. To, glad to do it. I love doing this kind of stuff. Probably the thing that I enjoy most at this point in my, I guess, career with this would be the right word. I love teaching. I love helping people. I love to see that little light bulb go off uh, over their head when they get it. Uh, so it's uh, it, it's fulfilling to me. Well, I am going to go back to my podcast partner, Billy. Now I'm going to explain to him off air what a DVD is because he's, you know, he's a little bit before that. I mean, after that. Yes. So yep, I'm going to yep. explain to him what a DVD is. And we thank you very much, Tommy. Absolutely. Glad to right. do it. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah, what's a DVD? What's this guy talking about? Well, it's this silver thing that's flat that you people used to put in a DVD play. I mean, anyway. can I look on Instagram for a picture? That's so funny, Facebook, man. Facebook, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. Isn't Instagram. that dated now? People don't do Facebook. Yeah, anymore? only old people do Facebook. I don't get you guys. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll get you up to date. Billy, where do I start? The uh, best takeaway. Yes. I, I brought you the Michael Jordan. Of Dude, long distance surf he casting. Is. He's the goat for sure. And I need you to tell me your best <laughs> takeaway. Dude, I don't know what my best takeaway is. Probably 45. Like, I'm, a, you know, always like that. Like, hey, 45 consistent, 45 here, 45 here, 45 on the stop. So it's all like that made sense to me. And as somebody who studied casting in the fly fishing world a lot, I've studied a lot of casting, fly fishing casting, I was like, Oh man, I might actually be able to cast a surf rod because I'm pretty pretty much horrible at it. So after this, I'm getting my surf rod out. And I'm gonna go just try to cast. Like not forget about catching a fish. I'm coming after you, Tommy Farmer. No, well, I'm that's after your record. I'll tell you, no, that's I'm my takeaway. <laughs> what I heard him say is, you know, now that he's gotten a little bit older, he's not casting as far. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna wait until he's ninety. And then go after his record. And then I'm going to challenge him. <laughs> hey, Tommy, come here. Out in the field, me and you, 20 bucks. <laughs> 20, yeah. But not before he's no, 90. No, dude, he'll take all of your 20s. <laughs> oh. <laughs> People will be buying a lot of coffee just so he'll you can pay this guy off. At 90, he'll take my 20. <laughs> but at least I have, feel like I have a chance. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, we really just want to say thank you to Marine Warehouse, Academy Sports, R.A. Hitch for really making this episode possible. And one more thing, Gary, I'm going to surprise you with this one. I want to read one of our podcast reviews. Uh, we've been getting people reading now or sending reviews in on Apple, and you can do that. So if you want to leave us a review, we'll read it here. Yes. Uh, this is tons of useful knowledge in each of these podcasts. Every time I tune in, I learn something new that I can't wait to try. Keep it up. And that was from T underscore Mason 17. And uh, I was thinking about this review as this podcast is being recorded. I was like, dude, you're going to have a lot to try when you listen to this episode. So uh, all made possible by Marine Warehouse and those guys. So really appreciate it. We love them all, man. Marine Warehouse, Academy Sports, R.A. Hitch. And uh, until next time. All right. We'll see you, Gary. Fisherman's Post.